What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's video. I've got the Radix 7 engine, which unfortunately expired not at all on schedule to any sort of plans that I had put forth for upgrades or anything like that. But we exploded an oil cooler line. The front stationary gear bearing completely smoked, welded itself to the E-shaft, and we're digging into this thing so that we can upgrade it with some parts I got laying around and then do some improvements to the oil ventilation, fix my oil slosh issue. So let's go ahead and pop this thing apart. I went ahead and got all the tension bolts loosened with my big breaker bar. I'm gonna buzz these off with the impact and we're gonna start lifting this thing out. And hopefully we don't find any crazy damage to the rotor bearings so that I can just replace the E-shaft, the stack gears with a set of RX-8 parts and we can put this thing back together with just a soft seal kit and it can be the cheapest rebuild ever. That's ideally the goal. If you even want to call that a rebuild, I mean, we're reassembling the engine. So rebuild, but the apex seals and everything are going to stay the same. So let's pop this thing apart. So y'all just saw me remove some studs back whenever we built this engine, we put four turblown studs in the engine. We figured what could it hurt might add some more rigidity to the block. Come to find out doing some research, the 10 mil studs, these, you know, I haven't seen any super proven results of the actual strength that these add to your engine block. To me, it makes sense that they would, which is why obviously I put these in here. You can see they still wiggle around in there a little bit. With the tolerances of the dowel that holds this engine together at the top of your housing and at the bottom on the exhaust side, I mean, if you're going to load this piece, right, and you're going to twist the irons and housings and this is actually going to take load, most likely that dowel has already broken itself out of the iron. So I would see more luck or think that, uh, you know, these are kind of inconvenient to put in and out as I'm taking this apart. I think in the future for a big power build, it's probably going to be best to just like go ahead for the big 12 millimeter fully reinforced studs versus these small ones. I think I'm probably just gonna put my engine back together with tension bolts and we'll put these in Charles's REW for his blue truck. We'll just do the whole engine with the studs instead of you know, putting four of them in my engine and then four less in his. So this engine hasn't been together for very long, unfortunately. Like I said, it broke not on the schedule for upgrades. It just broke. We flat out broke it. So hopefully, it should come on. There we go. Come apart super easy. Be relatively clean and go to back together super easy. Find a place to put these irons. One side seal stuck on there. Oh yeah, baby. Housing's looking good. Apex seal corners looking good. So tearing these engines down, I always number my stuff with something that doesn't erase. Sharpie will come off. So. The B, which is your balance letter, gear side, the apex seal closest to the B right here is what I call number one. One, two, three, that transitions through. Four, five, six. On the other side, it's backwards if you still go clockwise. So looking in here, this bearing doesn't look like it's spun, which is good. A little bit of heat in there. Hopefully there's no crazy wear on this rotor, but let's slide this baby out. Sometimes the dowels can be a little cantankerous coming out. Especially if your engine's been together for a long time. Housing looks pretty good. Um, yeah, there are a super seals. That's kind of what you expect. We're going to keep running it. It'll be fine. All right. It's very important when you're taking your engine apart that you keep the apex seal and the little two-piece triangle piece together. That's apex seal number one. In their respective spots, especially if you've clearance all this stuff, you don't want to have to go through and re-clearance it or recheck all the clearances if you've mixed all your seals up like a game of hide and seek. I'm really hoping, guys, I can just pop this thing back together. Looks nice and clean in here, which is a win. I've been running kind of a mixture of different pre-mixes in this deal, but mostly renewable lubricants in this engine, so should be super clean. I have been running the renewable lubricants just a little bit heavier than what they recommend. 
They recommend one ounce per gallon. I've been running at one and a half ounces per gallon just because if it does burn a lot cleaner, as you can see, which it's a good test to look at it, but since it burns a lot cleaner, less premix is staying in the engine. So one of the conversations we've been having on Patreon about premix is like, what is the best? Like, we're not scientists, but in my head, it makes sense that there is a balance between the amount of premix burned and then the amount of premix that stays in your engine to lubricate things, right? So if you're burning all of it, you're not getting as much lubrication. So there's, you know, there's some sort of a balance in there. The thing that's interesting is, you know, you see a lot of people running stuff, different brands of premix, different brands of oil, just different parts in general, right? You'll see people testing parts or being sponsored, getting stuff to run their cars, which is all well and good. But I like to see the data. And I've seen really good data on running renewable lubricants racing engine oil. The oil temperatures on track are lower. The oil comes out cleaner. Everything just looks happier. Same thing with their premix. It burns a lot cleaner in a street car. But uh, I always just like to, I always just like to test it. Go check out my video on the Apex Seal wear. So right now, I am not going to pull the oil control rings out of the rotor. I really want those to stay in the rotor. If you take them out, you've got to replace them, or at least I would recommend replacing them. So hopefully these stay in for the duration of while my rotor is sitting on the shelf over here. And I'm not really going to like deep clean these rotors because I just want to put the engine back together, right? We're just fixing the bearings. So ideally when I slide this up, we're not fully disappointed. And this bearing still looks mint and I'd be willing to run it. Oh yeah. It's really not that bad. Now that I do think about it though, you know, we did run a bunch of metal shavings through the engine potentially. So probably ought to clean these, but uh, the bearing looks really good. All right guys, here's that bearing. Nothing really too excessive. Looks like it might've picked up a little piece of dirt there. I don't really remember what these bearings looked like before we put this engine together, but they definitely weren't new. You can see it's had some chunks kind of come through there, but nothing I can feel in my finger. So it hasn't even really worn the coating off at all. So we're gonna run them. I think it'll be fun. I hate when the front housing tries to come off with the center iron. Always a pain to get these dowels separated. And you stay there, just like that. Sweet. Spin you around, there we go. Now, should be able to tap these dowels. out of the center iron and then in theory the center iron comes off and it leaves the housing on the ground it's not going to do that lost the corner seal so you got to be real careful when you're dinging and banging and wiggling around on these especially if you want to put it back together that you don't lose stuff on the ground especially if you're doing this in a dirty garage so now the fun tricky part you got to lift up the e-shaft with your knee and then wiggle the center iron off when you do these solo just like that now i don't have a front stationary gear bearing in the engine well, it's stuck on the e-shaft, but it'll be fine. Okie dokie. Well, now that we know the is going to come out super easy, this housing. Let's just take the housing off. Sweet. Man, this one's in a lot better shape than the other one. When you get to your front rotor, you don't know which one's one, two, six, or eight because the gear and the label is on. Because the label is on the gear side. So I'm going to slide the e-shaft out of here, it should just come right out, okay maybe not because of the front bearing stuck on it, um, which, so it's just one, not going to want to come through the rotor I guess because that shares the side, 
so the rotor's not going to come off because the E shaft's in there. This is inconvenient. Okay, let's just get all of this up here. I'm losing stuff. That one came out of there. There's my letter. Okay, so that makes this one, this pair, number one. One, that makes this pair, number two. No way. Do I have a collapsed corner seal spring? Nope, that corner seal spring just isn't in there. All right, now we've got to get the Got to get the rotor off the E-shaft. Looks like the bearing's okay, though. The E-shaft's basically smoked, right? So let's just Dremel cut this bearing off, split it open, we'll be mint. How does it look guys? Can you see it? Alright guys, rotor bearing number two, the front rotor didn't spin. Looks pretty good. If anything, the rear rotor caught just a little bit more junk than the front, which is to be expected as it receives oil first, so any of the bigger chunks would have ran through that. I think the rotor bearings are going to be salvageable. At least I've got a RX-8 E-shaft here fresh out of some junkyard engine somewhere that we're going to run in this engine with these rotary engines you don't exactly put brand new bits in it most of the time sometimes you might buy a brand new e-shaft but most of the time you're not buying a new e-shaft you're just running the one that was in it or a better one so this rx8 e-shaft looks good these are stronger they distribute oil just a little bit better so we put this in there that was the biggest thing i was worried about with this engine is that this engine has Series 6 or Series 5 turbo rotors in it. They're probably one of the better rotors as far as just like turbo, 9 0 to 1 compression, good looking. The casting's pretty consistent. The weight's pretty good. So those rotors, I didn't really want to ruin them. I didn't have another set of them matched. So this set is matched. I would have had to have switched to Series 4 turbo rotors or run like a an NA rotor and boost it anyways. So I'm happy the rotors look good. As far as RX-8 stationary gears, that's what these are. They're a little stained. My front one has just a slight bit of copper showing, but it's still smooth, still looks good, so we're gonna run that. And the rear one actually looks pretty good. A little bit of oxidation, probably just from sitting, but I think it ought, I think it ought to be just fine in there. So the RX-8 stationary gears are hardened. They're a little bit stronger. They'll take a little bit more abuse. I don't think that my 400 horsepower first generation RX-7 is exactly going to terrorize these stationary gears, but I've got a set laying around with good bearings. Might as well use it and put it back together. So I've got a lot of cleaning to do. Get all this stuff wiped down, get all the seals cleaned. You know, we can just take this E-shaft the old one and basically throw it in the dumpster it's pretty much smoked especially after i've chopped a groove into it getting the bearing off but either way it's spun a bearing i don't like to use parts that have spun bearings we just dumpster fire those so you can see look at that that bearing that bearing got hot burned right through everything my camera's not really conducive to showing this to you but it's interesting to look at this stationary gear bearing and see how much copper is in it. So there's actually probably a solid millimeter, you know, maybe a quarter of the cross section of this is copper. I'll hold it up, y'all probably will be able to see. Yeah, didn't focus, it's no big deal. There's a decent amount of copper in that thing, which is actually kind of surprising. Figured there'd be more of it, but aluminum with copper with a coating on it. Looks kind of neat. There probably was more copper in there before the bearing spun though. 
So with that, this thing's all apart. I'm excited. Irons all look okay. Keep in mind, guys, this was not a brand new engine whenever I put it together and it went back in this car. It had been in this car for a while, but with a Series 4 rear iron on it, when that rear iron broke, that's basically whenever I got the car from Charles, fixed that with a Series 5 rear iron, and then put the car back together. So what do I have left on the car to do? Well, I've got to clean all of this up. Got to clean some hoses, and we've got to sort out catch can system. So my idea was to do some sort of a catch can with a exhaust scavenge. So what that means is that the exhaust is going to have a little venturi thing, and it's going to suck the crankcase pressure out of the catch can. So whenever I get into boost, the boost doesn't make positive crankcase pressure. In addition, I'm going to add in my turbo drain i think the turbo drain will probably be an okay place for it maybe i need to do it separately maybe i'll add another bung on the back of the engine too but i need to add another vent for the bottom of the engine so if you think about it the oil filler is on the driver's side and that's where my catch can was pulling so if i take a right turn all the oil goes to the driver's side it blocks off the vent now i shove a whole bunch of boost into the crankcase and it pressurizes it and just pushes the oil out into my catch can. So if you can imagine, I need to vent the right side of my engine so that when I'm taking a right turn, the boost has a way to get to the catch can and get to atmosphere without pushing oil out in front of it. So I think if I'm turning right hard enough where my turbo drain enters the oil pan, that should slosh oil enough away from it that the air should be able to escape and go to the catch can. So if I tee off my turbo drain, or I need to add a vent somewhere on the engine that's on that side that won't get blocked off. So I'm kind of thinking, honestly, a good spot would be down here in the front cover. So I have a GSLSE front cover. It doesn't have the stock turbo drain location in it. So I bet I could add a vent up here so that when oil sloshes over there, the front cover would work. And I could probably bring it up over this up around here and i'm potentially going to drill a hole in my full function engineering distributor block off plate and use that as my catch can so that i don't have to remove my catch can line in order to fill my car up with oil so that is my thoughts there and then from the catch can wherever it's mounted there will be a line that runs to the exhaust to suck or vacuum out the crankcase pressure versus just letting it bleed off the atmosphere so it should help me with my oil slosh issues so that's the plan for the Radix 7. I got a few parts to order. I got to get a soft seal kit. Probably going to go ahead and just replace the corner seal rubbers. But other than that, I'm going to try to clean this thing without messing up the oil control rings. But we'll run this stuff through the parts washer and get it all cleaned. And we'll get this engine stacked up. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it rad. All right, guys. I've got too many engines to apart here. I got an REW for another guy my engine over there which that one will just like go right back together this one still needs some port work some machine shop work it's coming back from rally car is looking sick still with its broken rear axle but i have the whole other car all torn down over there so i just got to get to work on this thing and the four rotor i've made a bunch of progress on this so expect to see a video on the four rotor here shortly i've got the ronin subframe in there i built engine mounts built a brace across the back of the subframe so that's all good the rack is spaced up a little bit and i'm working on some sort of radiator brown this is a stock radiator we might go with one of those chase bays tucked ones if it'll fit between the uh engine and the front pulley here so it gets pretty tight when you put a four rotor in this deal 